Joshua. Joshua. It's already begun. What's already begun? There's no, nothing's going on. I'm, just, I'm hanging out. I'm having a good time. In fact, it says what? Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got, got you. It's already happened. Bro, what are you doing? Nothing. You... What? You just came down the stairs like a madman. What are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? Josh, you're acting weird. What? You're acting weird. Josh, we're going to ask you one more time. Are you okay? I'm fine. Wait, we? Yeah. We are Venom. Yeah, I'm just gonna act like that didn't happen. Like what didn't happen? <sighs> oh, fuck. You ready to do this or not? Like, let me know right now, man. I just said we're fine. Alright. Something we both unilaterally agreed on was our favorite part of this film. Oh, yeah. Was the chase sequence. And I think for me, that starts a little bit sooner. That starts once he gets back to his apartment after getting infected from the lab, which, by yeah. the way, that whole sequence is fantastic as well. Um, more on that later. Yeah. Um, well, can we talk about that for a second? Like, do you I want mean, to talk about it now? We can. I mean, in... In terms of continuity, the scene at the lab was dope. You it, said it was it, fantastic. It was horror movie vibes. It was so horror movie. It in felt, the best way possible. In the best way possible because that whole scene with with uh, um his homeless friend. Oh God, he, Mora? He, yeah, he sees her locked up. Moira. And he he busts this woman Maria. out. Maria. Uh, Maria. Yeah. She instantly attacks him. Yeah, she's like, oh, Eddie, Eddie, let me out, let me out, and then like, Bleh. yeah, it felt like it felt like a freaking zombie movie for it like the, great. the two to five minutes that that scene was available. It and felt she was like, like a total zombie, choking movie. him out while the while the symbiote transferred into yeah. him, and then she was just dead. Yeah, and and he has no clue what's going on. He busts out. We get to see. Um, a bit of him. He he jumps off the wall. Yep. Um, and then he um, busts through the door, and there was that whole forest sequence that was crazy. He's going through there eating raw t tater tots. He's he's throwing up. He goes. His his roommate starts playing loud music, and he just goes across. He's like, "Hey man, could you keep it down? I'm not feeling too well." And he's like, "Oh yeah, man, I'll do that." And he's just like. <laughs> Yeah. Freaks out on him. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, That's I'll cool. do that now. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And then you have the the workers from um, Drake's facility that come yep. in. It, yeah. They kicked out. He's like, don't answer that door. And boom. Which was crazy because, like, I didn't expect That extra whole, sense. Yeah. That, the venom sense. That's the first we see of any form of spider sense. And that's awesome. Yeah. It's, so, very, it's very cool. Oh, it was it's so cool. And, and then from there, just chaos ensues. There, He's fighting everyone in the room. and so It's a cool. great fight sequence. Great and then fight it sequence. gets taken out of the room into the streets of San Francisco. He's on his bike. He does a couple of really crazy stunts. Um, he... <laughs> <laughs> he slams two cars together, yeah. which is amazing in itself. Then he's like, I'm going to die. He's like, I won't let you. And he flings them over this railing with the motorcycle. And he's like free falling over top of it, swings himself back down, comes back down. He's like, whoa, that was awesome. Man, I can't believe we just survived. Bam. Yeah. Hit by trees. Yeah. So even... even broke. Even even if that scene was in like the commercials and stuff, mm -hmm. it was it was effective. It was a solid scene. It was a really. It good still scene. held up with mm -hmm. with the music and just the ambiance and everything. That scene and really I could see held why up. they would want to have that scene be be one of the trailers and be yeah. what brings people into it. Yeah, 
I, I really enjoy that and the whole part where we get to see our first form of violence. There's Treese and someone else that gets out of the car and it's, Venom. Yeah, the guy, the the henchman number one. Yeah, henchman number one <laughs> comes out and starts <laughs> shooting at him, and he turns around and dro- throws Treese. Yeah, already giving Treese some reason to hate Eddie Brock and Venom. Yeah, and just rips his buddy's head off. Yeah, no blood, no blood. No blood, just spit. Say it again. No blood. No blood. What's this movie rated? I think this was rated R. It was rated R because they were throwing S-bombs left and right. So, yeah. 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 Total. <laughs> yeah. No. Zero, zero blood anywhere in this film. Um, even though they're killing each other, basically. Yeah. <laughs> you know what was weird, though? Um... There was the scene with the drones, mm-hmm. and like one of the drones goes off right next to his head, and he's like, ah! And then like another drone um, hits a car, and the whole car just blows the crap up. Like, I was like, wait, like what? Bay explosion. <laughs> right! I mean, well, well, you see, that car wasn't protected by a symbiote, Brandon. You just don't get it. I guess. I mean, but I think that leads us into our next point. Things that just don't make sense. Things that don't make sense. Yeah. Brandon, there's a lot of good about this movie. Well, it's it's just such it's it's middle of the road all yeah. the way through. Yeah. But then then we found the plot holes. <laughs> then we found the inconsistencies. Yeah, you you had me cracking up actually because a lot of the things that you were bringing up, I was not thinking about at all. <laughs> Cuz like they're just they're there, but it's like are you going to notice it? Do you yeah. pick up on it? Like, one of those was, um, I think it was the 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 nature of the symbiotes. Right. Right? A lot's explained, a lot's not explained. A lot is not explained. They, Go, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Okay. Um, going back to the horror scene, so they, they were talking about how oh the symbiote accepts <laughs> and things of that nature, and, yeah. like, some of the people, like, they were, um, they were rejecting... You know, like their bodies were shutting down. They were being. They don't rejected. want to. They don't make these cages easily easy to break out of. Right. These people. Right. So first off, this is a multi-billion-dollar facility. Extremely and then, high end. And then we have Eddie Brock who comes up with a fire extinguisher. One, two, three, four, and, and breaks down this door. And not only that, but they're talking about how how these um, hosts are reacting with the bodies. Yeah. His friend has the host in her. She's sitting there, and she's not doesn't seem to be in any immediate pain. She's distraught. Don't get me wrong. She has this she's alien entity out. in her, but she's not. You know, she's not freaking out. She doesn't look like she's in any pain. She breaks out. The symbiote goes into Eddie. She just freaking dies. Yes. That doesn't happen to anyone else. Nobody else except for random people that aren't main plot points. Yeah, she just freaking dies. And it's like... Anne doesn't die. No. The dog doesn't die. No. The rabbit doesn't die. Like... Drake doesn't... Well, Drake never... No, Drake doesn't die. Drake doesn't die. And no, Eddie doesn't at all. die. Until he gets stabbed. Right. And he... <sighs> It just doesn't make sense. Like, you have these people, these convenient people, and I, I understand that they're plot devices, but at the same time... You gotta explain a little bit. You, you, yeah. you set up all this back, uh, like, I guess, science history with Drake investigating the symbiotes and kind of explaining, like, oh, so they need a host to be able to live in our planet and we can live up there. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Great. That's fine. Cool if you want to explain that. You brought this up. Where do the bodies go after they eat them? Right. Does it go into Eddie's stomach? Does it, it get absorbed into Venom's, like, infrastructure? And to be fair, maybe that's more complication than they wanted to go about explaining on film. Right. I can respect that. That's fine. But um, do the symbiotes choose the compatibility? Do, yeah. do they get to pick and choose? That's never fully explained. Yeah, that was not fully at explained at all. I mean, because like you said, um, Anne, his... Yeah. Yeah, she... She picks it up just no problem. But that's another thing, though. It's like, okay, she sees what Eddie is going through with this yeah. thing. And she, she she's like, Eddie, you're sick and all of this. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's the she symbiote sees is the in thing. her. And then it's like, it comes. It's fine. Well, hey, I need to get it to you to save Eddie. All right. Like, what? And then the whole kiss? Was that of really? Of they make out. Really? 
Of course. I mean, but she's like, but literally five minutes ago, she's got a new boyfriend. She's yeah. moved on with her life. Which, by she's the way, chilling. How much time passes between when Anne? They don't Annie explain break up? any of this. He, he. She just he got alludes, a new boyfriend like immediately. Right, but he he alludes that you know it, it's been a while since we've seen each other. At one point, we were going to be while. married. But how long's a while? How man? long is a while? We, you can, know? we can talk, like, I can say that, like, oh, I haven't seen you in a while, Brandon. It's been three days. Right. I mean, it most certainly hasn't been three days for them. No. You know? If it has, damn, that's cold. I mean, right. For her to move on that's after mean. three days. Right. Especially, they, they both knew that it was going to get married. So. Yeah. And I, and I know that, like, he sabotaged her career. and But, like, he lost his career, too. Right. Oh, you I'm guys, just saying, I feel for the guy. Oh, you guys are thinking way too deep into this. Why did they just put up a, a shot in between scenes that said six months later? Something. Anything. And, and normally that's something to be complaining about is too much, you know, text position. Right. But um, it was it was kind of needed for that a little bit. And speaking of the girlfriend. And, and inconsistencies. Right. Okay. So, so you, have, you have the whole scene where... That, it's um, the climax of the movie. Yeah. Riot and Venom and, and Eddie and Drake are fighting and they're getting pulled off each other back and forth. Yeah. And then she sets off a high pitched noise <laughs> that causes them to go crazy, which is well and good. But well, when you think a about lawyer. it. <laughs> right. This is a this is a spacecraft launching facility. This is you can think of this like uh, what is it? The, the the NASA launch pad or the Falcon X launch pad. And this lawyer, this random lawyer, has never been here once before in her life other than to do lawyer things. Right. Finds exactly where this PA button is immediately. And not only that, but I get that everyone rushed out the room when Riot went crazy and broke up all the equipment. Foreshadowing. Point. But you mean to tell me all the security guards just dipped out? That's a real, that, oh wow. Like, I didn't even think about that one. That's an, okay. Because she got up there relatively quickly. It, yeah, I mean, he's still here. Like, guards still have to be patrolling that facility. Exactly. She doesn't have a symbiote in her at this point, so she doesn't have superpowers to be able to rely on. And, like, yeah, she's she's a, she's a badass woman figure. That's cool. I'm fine That's with that. fine. But, like, armed guards are still going to stop you. Right, they're still going to be on the, on the premises. Like, Eddie even tries to take Treese's gun at one point, and Treese just beats the crap out of him. He's just, like, pays to be a specialist, I guess. She's not getting through the security if there is any in that. No! And, and then again, like I just said, right. Riot destroyed the entire room. Everything. Everything. Just Every two blades sweeped everything across just the Just everything. Like, I'm sweeping the microphone and Brandon out of the scene. And then Brandon, like, some <laughs> random person pretending to be Brandon just shows up. It, and that's essentially what happened. So he wrecked this room, and then you, and then you have Anne... She's she goes in the room and then she turns up the sound. But the room was destroyed. So you mean to tell me of all the computers they got destroyed, that random one didn't? So uh, and and then there's a whole fight scene with Venom, like they are kind of Things get a little confusing there. They did like, get, you can't they really did tell confusing. who's who because they look so similar at certain points, and then at other points they don't look so similar, and it's like, okay, I can tell, you know, that's Venom. And then they start getting absorbed. Right. Now, I like the idea of, of symbiotes being able to absorb the power of other symbiotes. Yeah. But is that ever, like, touched upon at all? Right. Like, what would... What, what, I understand that they were trying to kill each other, but but the absorption... And then they went into one symbiote, yeah. and both of them are in the same body together. What was that about? And then speaking of, of <laughs> killing symbiotes... Oh, my God. <laughs> Drake just drops casually a line in the middle... And, like, towards the end of the film, it's like, I tried to save the other two, but they died. <laughs> when and how did those two symbiotes die? Why couldn't Riot have just, like, came there, been like, oh... I'm just going to absorb you guys and take your powers. Yeah. Uh, like, just just a lot of inconsistencies. That a lot of weird things. A lot of weird things. One one more thing? Mm -hmm. How at all was Drake able to fight Eddie? <laughs> at all? Like, he, like, okay. He's a multi-billion dollar nerd. We right. never see him do anything for himself. Right. He's intelligent and wealthy. Right. That's what he has going for him. 
Dude takes a superhero punch to the face and is fine. Right. <laughs> he's fine without the symbiote. He's fine. I mean, I'm knocked out. I'm not conscious after that. That's a heavy punch. It, he he ran up the, the ramp and yeah, lost himself. And lost himself. And, and in my view, this isn't just a punch from a normal guy. This, this is, is a punch from Tom from Hardy. From Tom freaking Hardy. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> no. Oh, my gosh. I mean, he's skinny like me. Like, maybe... He's skinny. He's, he's tiny. Yeah. He's not a fighter. Not at all. I mean, uh, without the symbiote, at least. Without, right. Without, without, without right. Not without the symbiote, at least. Um, when he has it, it's, it's on and popping. But yeah. Oh yeah. And then the fake out for Venom's death. Yeah. Why? Why did we need a fake out for Venom's death? You literally retcon that. Twenty seconds later. Twenty seconds later. Yeah. Twenty seconds. Maybe a minute, max. I mean, Venom can turn into anything, so he could have turned into an inky parachute. Okay, uh, well, yeah. I mean, I believe that, like, he Venom was trying to protect Eddie as he fell into the water. Yeah, I, I get that. Why does he say goodbye, though? <laughs> like, at, at this point, Eddie has been stabbed through the heart. Okay, dead smack, straight through the center, impaled yeah. out to here. He's impaled. Right. He's dead. Venom saves him. He's more Venom than he is than he is Eddie right. at this point. What? Where? Where is he gonna go? All right. Why is he just? He's just gonna disappear. That's it. Boom! Like bye, 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 Eddie. And bye. My, might I add, there was just as much fire on Venom than there yeah. was on Riot. I understand that he was in there and it was like ah, it just came all over his body. I get that. Bad choice of words, but there was just as much fire. Yeah. A a spaceship exploded. In his face. But I do want to say, in the contained, in, it makes more sense to have more damage happen to the contained uh, Riot and Drake. But nah, like, not no spaceship. They man. also <laughs> don't really show, they, they don't make it, cl like, <sighs> here's my thing with this scene. If you want to do a fake out death to set up for the sequel, do that, that's fine. Yeah. Don't pull your punch like freaking Batman versus Superman did. Don't show us the dirt rising above Superman's grave. Don't show us immediately after you just you just make us assume that Venom's dead. Yeah. That he's he's not dead. Right. It with no emotional impact towards that whatsoever. We don't even have time for it to sink in before he starts talking again. It, we don't. <laughs> we don't. That you know how they could have medicated that. They could have made that the end sec the the end the after yeah. credit sequence. Yeah. Instead of uh, we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. We'll get to that in a second. So we talked a lot about the things that didn't make sense. And the in things this movie. that we liked. Oh yeah, the things that we really liked in this movie. Now here's where we put on our personal spin, as you guys already know. But we decided to give it a bit of a name. This is going to be called The Crafting Curb. The Crafting Curb. Okay, so in the Crafting Curb, let's talk about um, the direction that we could have um, that this could have gone in. Um, you were going to say something before I took you off. So rudely, my apologies. <laughs> so, um, you, were, you, were, you were going to say that you would like to see that scene um, with Venom talking to Eddie as opposed to Carnage. So, Josh, tell me what you think about Carnage. I love Carnage. Yeah. Carnage is definitely my favorite supervillain across... Definitely, yeah, no, my favorite supervillain across DC and Marvel. And yeah. I know that Carnage isn't in DC at all, but I'm just putting that out there. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of really good DC villains that I like. None of them surpass my love for Carnage. He's brutal. He's insane. Yeah. He's ruthless in all of those things. And might I add that with Carnage, his level of derangement, we don't really see in Marvel Comics. No. I mean, we've seen some things in, in, the, um, in DC. Of course, we have the Joker. There are a yeah. lot of deranged... People in the, in the of, Batman universe, a lot of elsewhere world comics. Yeah, that, uh, but but this level, like Carnage, I mean, going deep into the lore, I mean, just going into his backstory, how he killed pretty much his entire family, including the family dog, because just because he didn't like him, just because. So yeah, Carnage. That's it's, at the essence too. He just does it. To do it. Just because to do he it. can. Just, yeah. 
Because why not? <clears throat> Which, I like Woody Harrelson. I like Woody Harrelson. I think Woody Harrelson would bring a lot to Cletus as a role. Oh, yeah. Why is he wearing the wig from Annie? <laughs> God. That's... <laughs> That's my main, that's my, that's my biggest thing. You brought up that, actually, um, why did we need to hear him say there's going to be carnage when we could have had him, like, briefly talk to him a little bit, not drop the line, and then have Eddie write down, like, this dude's absolutely bonkers insane, there's going to be carnage, and then, like, un underline, underline it, and then it goes off. I mean, as opposed to... that would have been effective. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know. I just hate where it's kind of handholdy in movies. Yeah, the, it's it's. I'm worried that they would definitely, if they do a sequel with Carnage, yeah. that they're gonna play it too safe the way that they did this Venom movie. Yeah, you know, and that you can't play Carnage safe. If no. you're doing Carnage, you have to do Carnage. Yeah, and that means a lot. Of, you're gonna have a death toll. People are gonna see the deaths, and there's gonna be blood. Yeah, and people are gonna be terrified. And it's probably going to go beyond just killing people and probably be a lot of mental torture. Yes. Um, I mean, it's just a specialty. One other thing that you had brought up that was really, really interesting to me was um, the fact that they could have done Scream with uh, Dr. Dr. Dora. Yeah. The, <laughs> just, just hear me out. a character we forgot to bring up. I mean, just, just, just hear me out on this. I mean, I personally would have saved Carnage for a third installment into the Venom franchise. That, yeah. And I would have had Scream as the second villain because when you think about it, she lost so much. Okay, so there, there was she a part lost her in family. the family. She lost she was the her job. The whole reason everything. she went to Eddie in the first place is she feared for her family because Drake says something along the lines of how are your kids doing because she tried to go against him. Yeah. And that was his way of saying, don't push me. Mm -hmm. So she lost a lot. And Eddie even asked her why she doesn't go to the police. She's right. like, I'm scared for my family. Like, I can't. Yeah. And I personally feel like this would have been awesome. Okay, so a lot of people have died. Um, Drake is covering it up. Yep. So, swiftly. My my end credit sequence would have been some guys that work for Drake. They are disposing of the dead bodies. Her body is one of them, and it's in a pile. And like, let's say it's California. There's mountains. There's caves. Whatever. So they they dump this body off in the cave, and then they're talking. The guys. Landfill. Yeah, landfill. Thank you. So the guys are talking like, ah, my shift is over. Let's go get a beer. Her body is down there. And there's complete silence. And it just pans out. It just pans out. And all of a sudden, you just hear screams. Just, just blood-curdling screams, and they get louder and louder, and then it goes off. That'd be amazing. That would have been awesome! That would have been awesome to introduce somebody that who has lost so much already. Yes. And don't get me wrong, I, I love the deranged nature of Carnage, right. but... A you gotta build up to that. Exactly. A character that is as dark as him, he deserves better build up than just throwing him Excellent. into a second movie. Something that I thought would have worked really well would have been um, having like sprinklings of background like news footage yeah. of like, you know, we're reporting uh, mass murders across several towns on the California coast. Yeah. Um, the suspect has been identified as Cletus. Um, and they give a brief like hand like you know, sketch he's up, drawing. He's on the run. He's considered very dangerous. And then they catch him by the end of that that second movie with Scream. Yeah. And then third movie, he's breaking out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that would have been really effective. It would have been really effective. And much more effective and impactful than seeing Woody Harrelson at the very end with this ridiculous wig. I love <laughs> Woody Harrelson. I've said that a couple of times. You and the wig, bro. It's a problem. <laughs> I would have rather seen him just go bald. I really would have. Um, 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 natural born killer style. Yeah. Yeah. And just have like a red beard or something. Yeah. Switch it up. Yeah. But like, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh they have to change that. Yeah. They have to change that. If, re if they're really doing Carnage for the second film, they have to change that way. He breaks out I and shaves his head. not be able to take it. Yeah, or, or at least gives himself a buzz cut or something. Something. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't have, like, stupid... Like, he's got curly hair in the comics, but he doesn't right. have, like... Like, clearly it's a wig <laughs> level of curly. Like, it's not that ridiculous. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's still pretty, like, menacing on the guy. Mm -hmm. 
So that is Venom Beyond. Let's Beyond. kind of really get into the um, the present Venom. Right. Um, what what changes would you have made? What what more would you have liked to see? What less would you have liked to see? We I guess we discussed it um, a bit when we talked about the things that didn't make sense. I would have cut the first act mm -hmm. down significantly. Mm -hmm. um, I would have I would have liked to see the opening kind of progress how it does initially. Um, and I say that a lot, but hear me out. So I'd like to see it start out where we're introduced to Eddie as the reporter, we're yeah. introduced to him and his girlfriend and how much he means to her, and instead of the important business meeting being him meeting Drake, it's him meeting Dora, the mm -hmm. doctor. And yeah, that cuts a lot out. That cuts out the convenience store clerk. But did we need the convenience store clerk? That cuts out the homeless person. Not really. We can have them talk about that as they're doing the interview. Yeah. And she, we could have even had a couple of scenes where, like, she's like, we see some emails, and instead of it being him going through his girlfriend's email, which is, I don't want to talk about what level of trust breaking that is, um... It's emails between him and Dr. Dora saying, like, remember, no cameras this time except your phone. You can only take pictures of what I'm going to tell you about, and just, you know, it's just you and me. I'd like to see that. And then it just, it picks up right from that lab scene that we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been cool. And okay, then it, because, I mean, there's such a, and I would have probably left the last half of that the way that it was, because, yeah. except for changing Drake being the one that Riot takes over, I would have had Treese be the one that he takes over. Just that would have been dope. It feels like the symbiotes are attracted to more powerful people, and that's why they choose to stay within those bodies. Yeah, even. Treese was cutthroat. He was very cutthroat, yeah. and had a lot more resentment towards Eddie Brock than uh, Drake did. Yeah, he was just stopping his plan for a better world, but Treese really hates this guy on a human level. Yeah, he's like, you're really making my job hard, dude. <laughs> right. Trust me. I don't like you. You're not a fan. I'm not a fan. Um, and I, I, I think I would have taken a few more risks. I would have had a little bit more brutality with, uh, Venom. I would have rearranged some of the, uh, no, actually, yeah, after that, I wouldn't have rearranged pretty much any, too many shots. Um, just added some more blood, added some more fight scenes with Venom. Yeah. And, um, played it a little more riskier. Yeah. Played it, played it a little <clears throat> riskier. They, they played it close to the chest, which I can't fault them for. Yeah. But... Yeah, no, I would have I would have gone out there a little bit more. What about you? My big gripe is towards the end of the movie. I I hate how you have these movies that have all this build up. Like for instance, um, two two come to mind. You have Godzilla and you have wait Godzilla twenty fourteen. Yes, Godzilla twenty fourteen, and you have um, God what what is it? And you have Batman versus Superman. Mm. Now, what these two have in common is their 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 major climax fight scenes. You know, their yeah. their major climax fight scenes. They were really short, mm -hmm. and but the and, best part of the whole. Fight. Right, but but they were bittersweet because they were just so short. And I feel that Venom kind of suffers from the same thing. So Venom was fighting right, but. He was doing a lot of dodging because Venom had the um, Ryan oh, yeah, had the power to Venom's craft the weapons. Sequel we never got. Yeah, Ryan had the had the power to craft weapons, and Venom did not for whatever reason. Even though we've seen it happen, we've seen it happen. Like for instance, that was that was the big chase scene that we love so much. Yep. Venom crashes through an apartment. They shoot down at him, and oh, he shit. makes a shield out of out of the Venom. So he has the ability. I would have, I personally would have made it so Eddie sees what's going on with Riot, he's crafting these weapons, and then he says to Venom, wait, aren't you, um, aren't you guys alike? And he crafts a weapon of himself. Because it just makes sense. It just makes freaking sense, dude. It just makes sense. And, like, as... They're instinct-based creatures. Right. So, of course, your first instinct to see when your uh, opponent, who's basically physiologically the same as you, pulls yeah. out a knife from his hand, you're probably going to pull out two knives from both of your hands. Right. Bro. Okay. I do like the... the I'm sorry. I do like the, the um, little bit of dialogue where he's like, you've got shit. He's got shit you've never seen before. Yeah, but, but even... is it? Is it, though? Like, and, and that's my, that's my thing. Like, okay, so you have... You have Eddie who is new 
to the symbiote. Yep. You have Drake, who's new to the symbiote. Yes. They have them at about the same time. You can't tell me that he knows how to use this thing better than I, Eddie at the moment. I would argue that Venom and Riot know how to use Eddie and Drake better than they know how to use that. <laughs> you said that. Uh, I, I get you. I get you. I get you. Yeah, I think. I think like in the sequel, it'll make it'll be more of an equal parts relationship. Yeah. With Eddie doing work as well as Venom doing work. But like you said, though, like in the moments. This dude has knives the size of my body. And, like, this is not just a fight fight. I'm about to die. This dude yeah. is trying to kill me. You better believe like, I'm going to figure something some out. Spikes or something Something. Crazy. Something. As opposed to just... It, and, yeah, he did do the thing where he grabbed his head and he slammed it to the ground. But, but he's still got knife arms, though. And he's still got spikes in his back. Right. I... I mean, you have these ever evolving and changing masses of goop, yeah. and they can do whatever they want, except you can't because plot. Right. I mean, okay. So Bad you reasons. you got reasons. me watching a Venom movie. Show me Venom. Show me Venom. Show me what this guy is capable of. And um. You gotta show Venom swing one time, man. I understand. I, no, Disney doesn't have the rights over web swinging. Sony, it's, Sony it's, actually has, I think, more rights to Spider-Man than Marvel does. So he couldn't swing across one building even for a second? I would have loved to see him swing across a building and then Eddie go, what was that? And then Venom just go, don't worry about it. Like, I would have loved to that see that. That would have been really funny. I mean, because it's like it, it's kind of like an Easter egg. It's kind of like a nod to what's to come, especially right. seeing as of how they, and they a nod set up to his carnage. background too. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So, so just have him swing one time. And Spider Man's such an integral part to Venom's origin story. The reason he gets the white spider is because his hatred for Spider Man initially, yeah. and you've changed all that now, which is which fine. is fine. You set fine. up it. You set it up in a way that's at least better than. The way that Ghostbusters set up their own Ghostbusters 2016 tried to set up their own right. take on the universe, but it still is lacking that that, yeah. that little something. Yeah, for the for those fans of the movie, which this movie was, to be fair, presented by Tom Hardy as mm -hmm. for the fans yeah. of Venom. Um, but I mean, with that being said, I think is there anything else you want to add? I no. No, I think that's it. Um, I think that covers all of our thoughts this week. Yeah, this this movie was a roller coaster of emotions, but it, yeah. it was a roller coaster of emotions while talking about it. Yeah, while watching <laughs> it, it's just like I'm I'm not not enjoying the movie. Right. But again, it's just it's it's so middle of the road. Yeah. It's it's not it's not up here. It's not down here. Um, cinematography's pretty good. You made a good point actually. Mm -hmm. One last point. This movie's very dark. This movie's freaking dark, bro. And not, like, in tone. <laughs> like, not, ooh, your, so edgy. Your color saturation's just way down. Right, it's just... very sepia tone, and, like... Anne wears a, a bright... Well, what would is, one would assume to be a bright plaid skirt. At least the red. And it's just... It's almost black. It's almost as black as her shirt. Yeah. Like, how is that possible? I don't know. Um, but with that being said... You know, don't forget to like, comment, rate, subscribe, tell us your thoughts. Please. If you hate us, tell us why. If you liked Venom, tell us why. If you didn't like Venom, tell us why. Let's get a conversation going. Um, we're the Curbstone Savants. And we're going to eat your eyes. Wait, what? <laughs>